Hello y'all, this is Red Flood, a mod for Hardspawn 4 that is set in a world where no one was able to truly win World War 1. With that out of the way, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. All it takes is less than a second. We are going to play as the United States of America who in this timeline had the Democrat Party collapse, which resulted in a decade of Republican Party control over the government. One Great Depression later and we arrive in 1936, where four major parties will be competing for power in that year's presidential election. Before we start, one important thing I will do before the playthrough officially begins is enable the April Fool's 2021 game rule. The ruling party ideology of the US is liberal, though that may change in the future depending on who wins the election. It doesn't really matter what we do in the focus tree currently, so I'm going to do the political part of it, which starts with Twilight's Last Gleaming and ends with Let the Campaign Begin. We got a nice event about the Hippo War. It basically tells us that in Red Flood, Huey Long was killed by a hippopotamus. The Jobless Progressive Party convention is taking place in Chicago. This particular political group is apparently a broad front of progressives and outright communists centered around the pro-labor Roman Catholic priest James Renshaw Cox. The JPP needs a vice presidential candidate. Our choices are Kentucky's favorite son who happens to be Ukrainian, and a socialist activist who is also a feminist. Let's go to the second one. An unlikely challenger has appeared to run for America's highest office, and it is named the Freelance Party. Its candidates consist of a vaguely rabbit-like individual known as Max and a anthropomorphic dog called Sam. At the Republican Party convention, the vice president tried to gain support for a campaign from the top party brass, but his efforts failed, and a man with a similar name to the current president will be the one to represent Republican interests. Some world news. The Danish parliament was abolished and a civil war in Persia has started. It is October and the time for the election is getting closer. All the parties, with the exception of the Republicans, seem to be doing well. In some part of America, a hard-working businessman named Leonard Sneed was fed up. He had operated an agricultural wholesale manufacturing and packaging plant. But with the advent of the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and the current president's policies, he was forced out of business. Now he is barely scraping by, and his dislike for the man currently in charge of the country couldn't be any higher. The big day is here. We are going to elect Father James Renshaw Cox and the JPP. The ideologically progressive JPP is in power now and we have some new stuff to do in the focus tree that will eventually take us to even more focuses once we complete In Poverty in America. To the south, in a different continent, it seems that Brazil is not socialist anymore, which is a little strange to see because usually they are in a faction with Red Germany. It is mid-1937 and the president we just recently elected has been assassinated by what appears to be two members of the Black Legion, if the description is anything to go by. The funeral of James Renshaw Cox is held. Due to this untimely event, the United States will have a new leader soon. Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, the vice president, is sworn in as the president. While the swearing-in procedure takes place, she sneaks a copy of the IWW Constitution into the Bible she is using for the ceremony. With Flynn in power, the ruling party ideology is now anarchist, and we also got access to her special political path. The entire U.S. Army and its 32 divisions have all been sent to the island of Guam for a nice little vacation that may also involve military exercises. Across the Pacific, there are now Japanese exiles in what could be considered Eastern Russia, and other than that, the country of Zelta Rosia broke apart. Some of the wars going on in the world right now include the Spanish Civil War, a fight in Central Asia, the Assyrian-Kurdish War, a conflict in the Indian subcontinent, the Baltic Civil War, more combat in India, Moldova being attacked by Ukraine, and last but not least, a clash in the Far East. We are constructing a lot of civilian factories and infrastructure in Kansas because, well, it's Kansas. The governor of Vermont has been assassinated. The Black Legion is not involved this time, the event says. Apparently, it was claimed that the assailant was an anarchist. Well, that's quite serious. The state of Vermont is declaring its independence and is leaving the USA for the time being. 
we have more problems as the M. Co. Rasta Unsta, aka the United States Emergency Committee, is breaking away, and in the process, will be taking a lot of the American South with them. Update on the deteriorating situation. There is now an independent Deseret, Kanawha, New York, and New England. Update to the Western Emergency Command, the Dakota's Republic, California, the New Mex, Colorado Emergency Government, or whatever, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Missouri have started existing as their own free polities. The German-American Bund declares the Volkstadt, and not more than an hour later, the local population met them with resistance. The man responsible for this organized rebellion simply goes by the alias of Sneed. We're going to play as the Volkstadt from now on by clicking on, well, pardon us, Mr. Gucci Loafers. We have a unique focus tree. Let's start it off with the visit. Our initial military force consists of five divisions. A majority of them are very, very elite in terms of experience level. The visit. This is a very funny event that will let us pick a country leader. We got three choices, but we will be going with the first one, and that is Sneed. I may have had to use a console command, but it doesn't matter anymore because Sneed is in power now, and his ideology is revisionist socialism of the agrarian socialist variety. Sneed is based off of the confusingly named Simpsons character Charles Temizarian, also known as Chuck. In the show, he is the former owner of Sneed's Feed and Seed. At some point, he and his wives sold the store to Al Sneed for an undisclosed amount. In the focus tree, we're going to do pay out city slickers, gummies for all, align Flynn, grow boring tomatoes, steady as she goes, pay out the farmers, and God bless the Sneed clave. The America collapse has arrived. The age of the disunited states of America has started. Sneeds, feed and seed, parentheses, formerly Chucks, needs to grow. And to achieve that, we will invade our neighbor, Missouri. On the west coast, California declares war on the much smaller state of Jefferson. In Europe, Italy beat up the leak solar, but more relevant to us is the offensive taking place in the former American Midwest. Missouri Falls. The next place we will march into is the nearby technocrat Oklahoma. We have a numbers advantage here, and we are going to exploit that by slipping through the gaps in the enemy's front line. Interesting, California went with the revisionist socialist path like Sneed's Feed and Seed and has become the Commonwealth of California. A civil war has started in the Mediterranean country of Greece between the reactionary government and the despotic Hellenic Regency. We are making a move on Texas because we need two things from them. One is their massive amount of oil, and the other one is their manpower. God bless the Sneed Clave is done. That means we can now start and complete, involve ourselves, conquer our neighbors, and the Sneed Empire. Involve ourselves is finished, and the country name has become the very grandiose sounding Imperium of Sneed. Texas has become our puppet, and the next country on our list is the United Communes of America. The overall strategy here is that if we are going to try to take over all the former continental USA, we are going to need some large puppets to make up for our small amount of cord states. Before we show to anarchists, the wrath of Sneed's feed and seed, we are going to add the Dakota's Republic to our domain to get a larger border with our soon-to-be enemy. The war has started, and we got 23 divisions to take part in the fighting. Meanwhile, our opposition's army seems to be propped up entirely by Filipinos for some reason. We are using peak strategy to make our way through the enemy's undefended territory. It won't be long before we reach their capital, Washington, D.C. Sneed's Feed and Seed has war goals on Deseret, the Navajo, and Kanawha. We are going to use them right away in order to prevent any larger countries from guaranteeing the independence of these three nations. The communes surrendered, and as a result, we now have the USA and its former puppets as our subjects. We're going to expand even more, maybe into New York, but before we do that, we need to consolidate our power by defeating the United States Emergency Committee. The fight in the South took a while, but we are now pushing into the Empire State, which will eventually be part of our empire. New York and the Emergency Committee are now under our control. Since that is done, we are going to turn our attention to the West and deal with the countries there. Besides Deseret and the Navajo, we are going to take on the Butler clique, the New Mex Colorado Emergency Government, and the Phoenix City Council all at once. 
The Western Emergency Command was also invaded, but they have sort of been banished to Alaska. While we put together a Navy to end them once and for all, we are going to smash into the Commonwealth of California. California has been integrated into the Imperium of Sneed, but there is more important news. We have managed to secure a license from Germany to build a Great War era submarine. We are going to bring Vermont, New England, and last but not least, Louisiana under our sway by doing, you guessed it, an invasion. Three of them. Sneedclave soldiers are landing in Anchorage. All of this won't be possible without the naval superiority we got from one submarine that uses a relatively ancient, by 1944 standards, design. The last true fight for the USA is underway between HP Lovecraft and Sneed. We should be able to secure a victory by going through Vermont. It is complete. All the city slickers in the continental United States are now puppets of the Imperium or have had their lands annexed into it. The video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the mod, check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment because it helps the algorithm recommend the video more. Have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye.